grab yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a glass of champagne or a bottle of water because this is going to be good. <laughs> strand of hair hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Annette if you are a new subscriber thank you so much for subscribing if you're not go ahead and hit the subscribe button I release videos once or twice a week covering a wide variety of topics sorry I gotta check my baby on a baby monitor <laughs> okay she's doing well and I would love it if you could join the family I love was uploading videos about fashion luxury career motherhood and all the crazy stuff in between there's something for everybody so be sure to hit the subscribe button today i will be talking about luxury items that are overpriced these luxury items are overhyped overpriced some of them i have so i'm guilty as well <laughs> but yeah i don't understand why some of these things are priced the way they're priced it's just ridiculous to me and i feel as though we are in the hype a lot of times we just end up buying whatever we think is good out there and we see someone buy it we see it on instagram we see the heavy marketing and we're like i want that it'll look that way on me it doesn't look that way on you it looked that way on xyz influencer who has xyz amount of hundreds of thousands of followers but you doesn't look that way on you or me so it's just something we have to be honest with ourselves about so the first item is the petite mall Louis Vuitton Petite Mall right now is almost $7,000. Why? First of all, the Petite Mall, I think in French, means a little box. I love that purse, don't get me wrong. If someone just like gifted me with $200,000, I don't know, let's even increase that. If someone gifted me with $500,000 and I bought my $300,000 mansion in the South, definitely not in the East Coast. <laughs> And I had disposable income and I bought my Birkins and I bought my Bulgari diamond necklaces and I bought all the extra stuff. Then I can buy the Petite Mall for $7,000 because at that point it's not going to like make a dent. But am I going to use my hard and entrepreneurial cash right now for Petite Mall? Absolutely not. I am not going to do that because it's not worth it. Um, and then they keep coming up with different variations of it. They have the red, they have the white, they have like logo on logo and reverse logo. No. The Petite Mile, the original Petite Mile is perfect as it is. I don't know why they felt the need to make so many changes and move things along and just make it into something that it's not. But yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of it by virtue of the price. I am a fan of the item because I like it, but I'm not going to buy it because it's overpriced. I mean, especially US dollars, I can save an extra two to three thousand dollars, go to Paris and buy Birkin. Now, this is all without the pandemic and without, you know, the craziness 2020 has given us. But overall, I'm not going to do that. It's just not, it's just not worth it. Not, I would rather buy a Chanel bag, <laughs> honestly, Chanel Jumbo for that price. And I don't have my eyes set on any Chanel Jumbos for that price just because I've decided not to buy any more leather goods in the United States. Um, I may buy little things here and there, but definitely not major purchases because we get killed on taxes and just the markup is ridiculous. I've done a video about this before, I believe. I've mentioned it in my other videos, so no, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, so Petite Mile definitely is number one. Number two is the Alea shoes. You know, there are the, these Azadine Alea shoes that were like the rave two years ago. They're about $1,500. Why? Now, the only pair of shoes that come close to about $1,000 that I will ever buy and I have bought are the Manolo Blahnik and Gisi pumps. One, the white one for my wedding and the blue one about five years ago. Now, those are classics. Those right. are classic shoes and that, you know, the craftsmanship is amazing. You can wear them, you know, winter, summer, spring, or fall. I can't say the same about those Alea shoes. Those shoes are just like fun for like a gala or like a night out or a really nice dinner and then that's about it. The spikes kind of like remind me of my I hate my father vibes you know that was kind of like a rave back in the 90s. Um, yeah some people go crazy about those shoes I don't know why. Now if I could get them at a discounted rate for about $500 maybe but still they're very selective. Sandals as we know are not very comfortable and these ones I've heard they're not even as comfortable, so then why would I go ahead and spend $1,500 plus tax 
in buying those shoes it just doesn't make sense to me so I'm definitely not going to spend my hard and money buying those shoes and the next item that I believe that are overpriced are Chanel costume jewelry why like you see like a tiny little Chanel ring for $700 why bruh you know and it's made of enamel it's made out of ceramic like bathroom tile it's not even something that is worth I mean the material that it's made out of is really cheap but then just put the CC logo on it and you mark it up 500% and people buy it. Now, I still love Chanel. I'm still going to buy a couple of, you know, their um, custom jewelry pieces. Very few. I do want a long pearl necklace because I feel like that's classic. But that's about it um, as far as custom jewelry. Maybe a tiny little earring here. There maybe, yeah. But for the most part, their custom jewelry is still significantly overpriced. Like, I don't understand why. It is just because you're wearing the logo, but the, the craftsmanship is crazy. Stones fall out a lot. Um, sometimes if you take it to the store to get it fixed, they'll tell you, sorry, we can't fix it just because um, it's just, we just don't fix it. <laughs> because they're aware that it is an item that is quote unquote expendable. So why would they spend your time and energy in fixing it? So that's one thing that I, I know that is an issue with custom jewelry and Chanel the custom jewelry is just way too expensive in the same light Hermes their home items are way too expensive I do have an Hermes tray which is like a sushi tray and um, you can buy actually Hermes dishware and I love the fact that Hermes has home I love Hermes home I love Tiffany home I have some stuff from Tiffany home I love them as well but I believe that Hermes home is just so expensive you get a tiny little teacup set you know maybe a tiny little teacup set and a little Pam saucer that's on for like $700, maybe $500. Why? All that needs to happen is for your two year old to knock it over and it shatters into pieces. It doesn't come with tea. It doesn't come with people from Ecuador who are like plucking the tea leaves for you. No, it's just a home item, home china. The same with the blankets and the pillows. I may eventually get them down the line. I know, you know, um, things have changed. Especially with the pandemic, now we focus on what we absolutely need, not so much as what we want. But you know, still in the back of my mind. But I know it's expensive. It's expensive. It's overpriced. It's not something that I believe is worth. You know, spending so much money down the line, and that's worth you even investing for your home. But if you like me, like the finer things in life, and you like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, then I understand why you bought it and why you have a couple. The same reason that I do, but doesn't go without saying that I hate how expensive it is and I believe it's overpriced. Like, come on, there's a cigar tray where you actually put the ashes from the cigar that I was going to get for my husband. It was $600 for a freaking cigar tray. Are you kidding me? It's going to be full of ashes. Just ashes, like, not ashes like Palm Sunday ashes, like from Dusty R and from Dusty Shaw Return. Ashes that could potentially give you eternal life. No, these are cigar ashes. No, it's just, it's, it's just not worth it. It's just not something that I'm doing. It's not something that I agree with. But I buy it because I'm human and I have flaws and I like what I like and I like what I like and I like what I like and I like what I like. So, hey. And then, Cartier Love Bracelet. This little bad boy. Why? Why is it as expensive as it is? I know it's solid gold. It's just like classic gold. It's a whole thing of gold. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get the love story behind it, I get the reasoning behind it, I get the vibe behind it, I love the somewhat exclusivity, you know, club of people who have it, I, I get it, trust me I do. But why is it so expensive? Especially in the United States. Someone needs to explain to me why it's so expensive because I believe that if I went to a jeweler and I said I want a solid gold piece, a band wrapped around my hand with or without the, you know, the, um, this, this screwdriver design or um, let's say I want to design like a flower you know like an em embossed flowers or let's say I don't know like embossed anchor design or whatever it's not going to be as much as the cardio love bracelet it's, it's not and mine doesn't have diamonds so the ones that even have the diamonds and have ceramic those are like whew, really expensive now I'm happy with this one someone asked me the other day if I'm gonna get more I don't think so. Now maybe with baby number two, because this was like my birthday slash push present slash um, love for my child, you know, 
all the feelings embodied into one. That's why this was a great present for me. It was, it was a joint combined effort between my husband and I. Um, so the next one, maybe down the line for baby number two, for it to be that special. But even if I don't get it, I'll still be very fine with it. Um, I don't believe in getting the ones with diamonds. I believe I'd rather get a whole lot of other things that have other diamonds, you know, maybe other brands that really do well with diamonds like, you know, Bulgari or Precious Stones or, you know, you can never get tired of Van Cleef, honestly. I mean, I have friends who are like, I'm done with Van Cleef, I'm done with Van Cleef, they know who they are. But then Van Cleef comes up with something they're like, oh, I absolutely had to get it. So I'd rather do that and have available cash than just be stuck with three love bracelets and it's just like, okay. <laughs> and then I don't wear them all the time. I wear them seasonably. So I, I wear this little bracelet for probably about three months to stretch and then I take it off and I keep it in the, in the box and I don't even look at it for another three to four months. And then I wear it again. So that's just how I enjoy this bracelet. But it scratches all the time. Like you feel it when you open the door. It just hits, it, it scratches, it scoffs. Huh. I may have to do a whole video dedicated to the Cartier Love Bracelet, which I probably will do at a different point in time because I believe it's something that's important for everybody to like know about it in case you want to buy it, in case you're obsessed with it, you're thinking about it, all of that. I probably will do a dedicated video on that. But for now, I'm just talking about the luxury items that I believe are overpriced and overhyped. And this one is definitely overpriced and definitely overhyped. So, yeah, that's it for me today, guys. What do you think about these items? I think they're overpriced in my opinion. Um, that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. I do love hearing from you guys. I love engaging in discussions with you guys about luxury and the contents of any video that I upload. I really enjoy the feedback and communication. You can also contact me on Instagram. My Instagram handle was it's in it a, and we can continue the discussion there. Don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I upload videos. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye guys.